Hello, welcome back to another episode of Learn Smart with People at Same Day. And um, this time around, we are going to be treating limits. Let's get started. In the previous video, we talked about how to solve a discontinuous function with limits. But how can you solve a discontinuous function? That brings us to the next topic, which is limits. The idea of limit is to describe how the output of a function behaves as the input approaches a particular value. I know, I know. Uh, that might be confusing. Uh, let's let us leave the definition and go to what, what's needed. Now this is a question. Lim x plus 5 where x tends to 2. To calculate this, just input 2 as x and there you have the answer to be 7. Yeah, quite straightforward. However, what if the question was to limit x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2, where x tends to 2? You would realize that it becomes undefined, right? Just like in the function we treated, discontinuous function. But discontinuity is not allowed in limits. And the idea of limits is that the output should almost be reaching a particular value. And uh, that brings us to how we can remove the discontinuity in the function, which was where we stopped in the last video. Now, we have quite a number of ways to solve this. The first way is to try factorization, if it works. And let's try it. So, now, if we are to factorize this, it becomes x squared minus 2 squared, since 2 squared equals 4, divided by x minus 2, right? There is difference of two squares, then it becomes x minus 2, x plus 2, divided by x minus 2. Then we can see that x minus 2 can cancel out in the numerator and denominator. Then you have x plus 2. The discontinuity is already removed. Then we can input 2 and you have 4. There are times that the factorization might not work then try differentiation. Differentiation might be a strange topic to you yet. We are going to treat it in videos to come, so you don't have to worry. And if you already know about it then, all good, all good, all good. Now, to differentiate x squared minus 4 divided by x minus 2, we have to do them individually, not using the quotient rule, because there's something called quotient rule in differentiation. And in case you don't even know quotient rule, then you don't have just you don't have, you don't have any problem. Just just forget it. Just forget it. We are going to get there. We don't actually need it here. You know, to solve this, they are going to be differentiated individually. So x square minus four equals two x. Now, do we get to this? The power of x comes down to multiply and subtract one from the power. And at the end of the day, you have two x. And since 4 is a constant, it does not have any x, then it becomes 0. The constant will always become 0. Now try the same thing for the denominator, which is x minus 2, then we have 1, right? 1 is the power of x in this case. It comes down to multiply x, it becomes 1x. Then you subtract 1 from the power. 1 minus 1 is 0. Then anything is power 0 is 1, right? So 1 times 1 is 1. And then on the day, we have 1. By the time you differentiate 2, it is 0, so equals 1. In the end, we have 2x all over 1. And now we can see that this discontinuity is gone. Now let's put x as 2, then we get 4. If the factorization does not work, then differentiation will definitely work. By now, we already know that the idea of limit is to avoid having 0 as the denominator of any function which will make the function undefined, right? And then, we try to remove the discontinuity either using factorization or differentiation. Now, what if we try to limit to zero, which is exactly what we are trying to avoid? Now, let's try this. Limit x squared plus 4x minus 5 divided by x squared, where x tends to zero. Now, we can't put zero as x, obviously. And we can't even try factorization either, since what we have there cannot be factorized. Yeah, even if it can be factorized, nothing can cancel out each other. Then we are left with differentiation. 
equation. Differentiating it gives us 2x plus 4 as the numerator and 2x as the denominator, right? But we can still put 0 because it will still make it undefined. Then, if you are faced with this kind of situation, you have to differentiate again. Differentiating again gives us 2 as the numerator and 2 as the denominator, right? Then we have 1 as the answer. Now, this is it. In case where the discontinuity does not remove after the first differentiation, then differentiate till the discontinuity disappears. Now, what if we were to limit to infinity itself? The exact thing we are trying to avoid right from time. Limit x squared minus 1 divided by x squared plus 1, where x tends to infinity. You can use the last example to solve this. Just keep differentiating till x disappears. And in this case, you get 1. But then you can still solve it in another way. Now that's the question. All you have to do is now look at the greatest power that x carries in the equation, both in the numerator and the denominator. In this case, we have x squared, right? And what we need to do is to divide through by the x with the greatest power that you can see. And since the x with the greatest power here is x squared, then divide all through by x squared. Then you'd realize that x squared cancels x squared through and then you have 1 minus 1 over x squared all over 1 plus 1 divided by x squared. Now, we input infinity. Now since infinity is a very large number, it means 1 divided by infinity squared will be so insignificant that it can, it can be neglected. Now let's, let's try this. Let's say infinity is 1 million, which is so small compared to infinity, right? Let's just assume that infinity is 1 million. We are to divide 1 by 1 million, then we have 0 0.000001, which does not have any significant difference if you are to add it or remove it from any value, isn't it? Just imagine having 0 0.00001 in your account. Now, Imagine a way to divide by infinity, then the zero just goes on ending like that. 0 0.00000 goes to infinity. Then we can say 1 divided by infinity square is as good as 0, right? So at the end of the day, we get 1 minus 0 divided by 1 plus 0, which is what? 1 in the end. Yeah, speaking of limits. You subscribing to my channel will give me joy without limits. I feel like I need an award for that. Let me bust your brain by telling you that I can just look at this question and tell the answer without solving anything. <laughs> you serious? Yes, yes, yes. I, I mean it. Now, this is a shortcut. If you are to limit to infinity, all you need to do is to look at x with the greatest power, both in the numerator and the denominator. Now, if they are the same in the numerator and denominator, all you just need to do is pick their coefficients and that's the answer. In fact, straightforward, so simple. Just pick their coefficient. The coefficient of x in the numerator is 1, x in the denominator is also 1, then 1 divided by 1. The answer is one. Let's try this. Limit 2x squared plus 4x minus 5 divided by 3x squared minus 3, where x tends to infinity. Now, all you need to do is check the numerator and denominator for the greatest power that x has. Now, you can see that it's still x squared here, and it's also x squared in the denominator as well. Just like I said, all you need to do is pick the coefficients and that's the answer. In this case, you have 2 divided by 3. Simple. If you are to limit to negative infinity, all you need to do is to put minus in front of the answer. And that's also. So if you are to limit this question to negative infinity, it means the answer just becomes minus 2 divided by 3. Oh my god! Wow! Now, the question that might be running through your mind is what if the numerator 
has greater power of x than the denominator. Then, well, don't just stress yourself, the answer is zero. And what if the denominator has greater power, then it's unsolvable within the limit of, you know, knowledge that we are to know in this level. Or as long as you guys are concerned, it's not solvable. And they would not even give you that kind of question, except, except there is a way to factorize such equation. If you are given such kind of thing, then first try and factorize it before you move it, and you see that it will be solvable. And that's that for limits. I hope you enjoyed it. Then until the next tutorial.